Good morning, CG. I'm Joseph Yonke. And I'm Eric Camargo. And today we have your CG TV broadcast for Friday, February 16th. You may have seen some of our custodians working around Snow Grove, but how much do you really know about their jobs? Molly Dew brings you a behind the scenes look into the role of keeping the school clean. When you think of custodians, what comes to mind? Many students may say cleaning or stocking the bathrooms, but that's only the tip of the iceberg. The head custodian brings us the side of custodians' lives that the students don't see. The cleaning aspect is only about half of what we do. I think a lot of people think that's all we do. Uh, but in reality, the delivering packages, you know, every package that comes into the school, whether it's Amazon, UPS, FedEx, um, that's all delivered to the loading dock. The custodians go through it all, and then we deliver those packages out through the building. But custodians aren't just limited to the school. Custodians are also in charge of cleaning up after school games or events. The athletic department brings us more about their role with custodians and how it impacts events. So we are in constant communication with them because not only do we need them throughout the day, we need them for our events to help us set up and tear down and then maintain it throughout an event. So sometimes if there's a spill or we need um, a bathroom refilled with soap or paper towels, whatever it may be, we are constantly communicating that with them. Custodians spend nights and weekends in the building around the school. Not only do they represent CG's campus, they also represent CG in a personal way. Mr. Mason brings us more about custodians' personal experience. Being really the people that, that are seen on the weekends, a lot of times we're the ones that are representing Center Grove High School on the weekends because a, you know, a lot of people are gone. And uh, the outside uh, parents and students that come from other schools, a lot of times their interaction is with custodians. A lot of people don't realize that. So it's you know, saying that it's important for us to you know, make sure that we're always professional and that you know, when people see us, their interaction with us puts Center Grove in a good light. You know, like if you see them around, just tell them, hey, thank you for all your hard work, and that's going to go a long way with them. Thanks, Molly. One of the many clubs we have is HOSA, a club for students who want to pursue a career in the biomedical field. Rohan Oja and Emma Watson bring you a story about this club in their recent Valentine's Day service project. HOSA is a national organization that broadens students' understanding of the health science world. Uh, HOSA stands for Health Occupation Students of America. It is now an international club, so we just call it HOSA Future Health Professionals. So HOSA is basically like science club. It's like BPA, but for students who are interested in the healthcare field. And it just gives you an opportunity to be able to um, compete in certain science events that you choose. So it has um, a bunch of different options for a lot of people who are interested in different things. Basically, we prepare for competition in our health-related field. We also do some community service projects like delivering Valentine's to the elderly um, during that season. So, Recently, HOSA held a Valentine-themed service learning project. Their members made Valentine's Day cards to donate to a nursing home. So our activity last Thursday was centered around Valentine's Day, and we made Valentine's Day cards for um, the nursing home at Denver Crossing. Um, and we got a lot of good we got a lot of good bad time sick cards, and we're gonna give that to them on the time set. Every year, Mrs. T Van takes students to compete in a number of events at the Hosa State Competition in downtown Indianapolis. So it's a normally a two to three day competition where you'll go downtown and you'll stay in a hotel, and just while you're there you'll compete in different events there's different sessions both in the morning and at night where they're just um they have different guest speakers um you are taking tests there you're being introduced to a whole bunch of um colleges and just other corporations where they're just trying to get their word out there to future healthcare professionals but overall it's just like a giant group of just all the HOSA members from around the state who come to campus. To learn more about HOSA, visit their website at hosa.org or contact Mrs. Tevan in room 104. Thanks guys! Every time you pick up your phone, what picture stares back at you? Probably Carr, Natalie Vance, and Liz Key ask you what or who is on your lock screen. Hi, I'm Liz Key. Let's go see what people's lock screens are like. Who am I here with? Hunter Grader. Eli Emmons. Uh, Mr. Dodson. Brady Weber, Aiden Kiar, that would be Jameer, Jalen Price, Sheridan Young, Bella Tran, Sam Hensel, Kyla Dunning, and the lady. 
Hannah Herring. Rowan Gilvin. Andrew Krupa. Andrew Duran. Carter Durrell. Kian Van Getz. Chris Sean. Titus. Mia Stonebrenner. Alex Grief. Riley Zellers. And what's your lock screen? It's Lee. This is Cam Peters. Ah, it's actually a picture of my dog. Jeremy Stanley. Um, it's my kit. My cats when they were really young. It, it's it's like the poster for the Mario movie. It is my cat Lola. A picture of me and my volleyball team toilet papering our coach's house. <laughs> Um, it's this drawing I made of these characters from a video game called Stardew Valley. My lovely girlfriend. Uh, it's my friend Ava Rolfson as a little girl. Um, it's Taylor Swift. It's you're on your own, kid, because I really like Taylor Swift. That's so cute. Uh, Spider-Man from the Spider-Verse movie. I have no idea, but it's really pretty. Number 91, the Rider will one. Uh, it is a broken screen. Just a black screen. Me and my friends. It's the moon. Creeper. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Uh, it's me and my grandpa. It is a character from a game I play. That's all for today, CG. Back to the studio. Thanks, guys. Last Saturday was Lunar New Year, a celebration of the transition into a new lunar calendar year. Many students celebrated this holiday, including the members of Center Grove's Culture Club. Molly Dew brings you the story. Last Friday, the Culture Club met up and celebrated the Chinese Lunar New Year. Chinese Lunar New Year is a festival that falls on the second new moon after the winter solstice. Mary Wang brings us more on what the Culture Club does to celebrate the new year and what some Lunar New Year traditions are. So last Friday, we were celebrating the Chinese Lunar New Year. And some of the activities we did was that we did a chopstick game, and then we also ate some of the Chinese Lunar New Year food that we usually use to celebrate Chinese New Year. I also did a presentation on like just some basic Chinese like Lunar New Year traditions that we do, which include like fireworks, like dumpling making, bread on um, bread on loaf, and some other like traditional Chinese you know dances and stuff like that. Each month, the Culture Club meets up to celebrate customs and traditions in different cultures. The club prepares different activities and presentations to share with the members. And then Yan Lin Zhao shares how each month's culture is decided. We try to hit all the different cultures throughout the year. So every time there's a big festival like Lunar New Year, we did Chinese culture. And then we'll do like Indian culture when Indian festival comes up. We don't like stick to one thing throughout the year. We always switch it up. Every single meeting is a new culture. And every year we try to do different cultures too. Mary shares her favorite parts of the culture club and the personal aspects she takes away from it. For every different culture, we will bring in like different food from that culture for people to you know try. So I definitely enjoy doing that, and I also enjoy teaching like just people about different culture and see that like they're learning something new and that they're enjoying what they're learning. I would say the people in there are very friendly, and also I think it's such a you know like a safe and like a comforting environment for people, and I think it's just a great experience if you know for people who are interested in cultures and just learning about the world. Contact Mr. Hagedorn in room 287 for more information on the next Culture Club meeting. Thanks, Molly. After placing runner-up in last year's state competition, 10 wrestlers will travel to Evansville today for a chance at the state title. Liz Key and Problem Carr bring you a preview of a state match. This past weekend, the boys wrestling team traveled to Evansville to compete at semi-state. 
10 wrestlers have moved on to the state finals. I feel like the ball is definitely in our court. Um, we have a lot of seniors on our squad that are experienced, and we've been here before, and we have five guys who've been under the lights before, and we're ready to go. Junior Eddie Goss has faced many challenges the past two years and wants to overcome them this year. Last year, I went in thinking I could make it, but I kind of had the same thought. Like It was kind of a, a fluke on how I made it to state in my, fr my freshman year. This year, I feel a lot of the pressure that I need to make it and need to do well since the last two years I've done all right. Senior Reese Courtney talks about how the team has pushed through practices leading up to their big day. Oh, it's been good. We've been training hard, and then we're starting to like ease out and just get ready to, for state and start trying to feel good. I've just been trying to stay on my head the whole season and not get too caught up on wins or losses or anything. Okay. Uh, good drill partners. Uh, I don't think there's a better room full of like practice partners in the state. Senior Katie McConnell talks about the in-depths of switching his weight class midseason and how it has impacted practice. Knowing that I have a kid that shoots is left-handed, it's changed my practice partner. So now I got to go with our heavyweight because he's left-handed and it's just putting in the work on uh, my left side. So at the beginning of the year, I was 215. I got sick midway through the year and I got... <laughs> I lost a bunch of weight, so I was, it was practical, practical for me to go 190. So I just made the weight cut, and uh, yeah, it's getting harder later in the season because I'm getting a little bit bigger, and it's just got to stop eating. Uh, last year, I got second at state, and this year is a lot different because I don't have my same practice partner as last year. Uh, unfortunately, this year he tore his ACL, and he's been out for a while. And that's basically why I went 190. I basically took his weight class. You can catch more of the boys wrestling at state this Friday and Saturday at the Ford Center in Evansville. Thanks, guys. That's all we have for you today, CG. Bye. Bye.